now in recent videos, we looked at the Zener diode. I have one right there, it's reverse bias, and they come in different values. This one is a 5.1 volt Zener diode. And so you can expect about 5.1 volts across it when current's flowing through it. And we showed that I was able to have a resistor and LED hold five volts across it for the most part. The thing is that when current changes, the current flowing through it, the voltage that it actually uh, drops is actually slightly different. So at higher currents, it's gonna build up a higher voltage. At uh, lower currents, it's gonna be lower than uh, 5.1 volts. And so it is a tiny bit current dependent. So if you need a steady voltage, that's what this video is gonna be about, then you want a steady current flowing through that Zener diode. Of course, if you have a load, that throws things off. So you'd want to give that to an amplifier, just that voltage, but uh, that's the actual use for it. But in any case, if you want a voltage build up here, you want a certain current going through the Zener diode. And so with the LM334 current source, or any other current source for that matter, you can have a set amount of current even as the supply voltage changes. So now the uh, setup that we have here, the set resistor, which determines how much current actually flows. It puts a, a voltage across there of 64 millivolts or 0 0.064 volts, if you wanna look at it that way. And uh, so this is a 10 ohm resistor. And so we'll look at how much current is flowing through. There should be about 6.4 uh, milliamps of current. So there you can see 6.6 .6 milliamps of current right there. And so if I add the Zener diode over here, so the cathode to the uh, V minus pin down there, R pin is in the middle and then V plus is up there. The flat side is to the left. But now we got that current flowing through that uh, resistor, that Zener diode, to hold the voltage of the Zener diode. So first we can look at it with uh, the oscilloscope, the voltage across the Zener diode. We'll zoom back a little bit. And uh, remember it's reverse bias, so the cathode is towards more positive. You use it in the opposite direction of uh, other components. And there you can see we got about 5.085 right there. So now what I'm gonna do is use the oscilloscope instead to uh, measure it, my pocket oscilloscope. So I got the uh, black alligator clip over there, clip to that jumper. Now I'm putting the jumper to the negative rail. Our voltage is gonna be on that side of the Zener diode, which is the negative rail. And uh, the other voltage, the voltage we're looking to in relationship to that, we're gonna put the red jumper right there. And we can put it anywhere along that line there. That's all one node, since we have a jumper connecting the two sides of the board. But there you can see, according to the oscilloscope, we got the same voltage. It looks like it is uh, five or one volt per division, I should say, so five squares, and it looks like it might be up just a little bit, but it might be easier just to say that that's five volts. But in any case, as long as we're happy with that voltage, what we're gonna do is look at the uh, power supply. So you can see we're powering the board with six volts. We do need a little more voltage right there from the supply than we're gonna get out of the Zener diode. So I'm gonna put it there since it's easier to remove there, but it's going right to the uh, Zener diode. And uh, there you can see we got five volts. And what I'm gonna do, we can just focus on that right now. In fact, I'll zoom in a little bit. So we got six volts at uh, the rail. I turned the power off by accident and uh, forgetting what I need to do. Let's get that back to current. And there we go. So we got voltage. So if I drop it to five volts, we're gonna lose some. We don't have enough voltage to get the integrated circuit going, the three terminal one that sets the current. But in any case, now we'll go up. And since it's a Zener diode, I don't know where we can stop, but let's go to 15 volts and uh, it might start getting too hot after that point. But the main takeaway was, even though we changed the voltage significantly, we more than doubled it, we, held that voltage where the Zener diode is. And again, a load would throw it off, but with no load, if you're just using it as an input that looks at voltage or whatever, you would have a steady voltage there, even though the supply voltage changed rapidly. So now we're gonna go on to another component, the 
LED. So the LED lights up forward bias when current goes through it. So it has a different purpose than the Zener diode. Its main purpose is to light up. But uh, otherwise it functions for the most part like other uh, diodes. The Zener diode you use reverse bias. The other ones you use forward bias. So let's zoom in so we can get a little better idea what I'm wearing here. So I'm going to move this jumper up. I'm going to go one below, one row below where that resistor is right there. And uh, so we got a gap. And now I'm going to get the LED on there. And we saw this in the video demonstrating the current source. The current's going to be the same through the LED. But just like the Zener diode, it's a semiconductor. The voltage that is built up across it, and I happen to actually be measuring it right now, depends on the current. So we've looked at this in other videos. Uh, when the LED is brighter, it's uh, blocking more voltage. When it's dimmer, it's less, but it's in a range. So for the green one, it's going to be around about 2.5 when it's really, really low current, and then maybe like 3.2 or something. But for the most part, it hovers around 3 volts right there. But again, just like the Zener diode, we have the power supply here. For whatever reason, we want this amount of current through the Zener, uh, the LED, I mean, even as things change it. So since it's needing less voltage, there we can lower the voltage to 4 volts in this case, but at 3 volts, you can see, really uh, drops it down. So we need too much voltage in this case to power the integrated circuit to provide the current. But there we go. Now you can see we got uh, 4 volts at the supply and uh, there. So now I'm going to go up to 13, a couple volts lower than we did with the uh, Zener because the Zener was blocking about uh, 2 more volts. So about 13. So I think this is getting pretty hot now. But uh, it operates up to 40 volts. But of course it has probably the same wattage as a transistor. So it gets hot at uh, higher voltages and current. But in any case, that's the main takeaway. That did not waver at all. Even as I changed the supply voltage a lot. So whether it's a Zener diode or an LED, you want a consistent brightness or something. Then you really want a current source especially if voltages are going to change. It doesn't come up much. The main takeaway though is if you have a fixed voltage that you want to make yourself and not use a 7805 or something, then using a Zener diode with a current source is a good way to get that voltage if you have an amplifier to transfer that voltage, which we're going to look at in a future video. So in any case, hope you enjoyed. Check out one of the other videos that I'm posting. Click like, subscribe, the bell, and all that. I put a link to Patreon down in the description. Uh, check that out if you can donate. That would help out a ton. I will see you in the next video.